So let's explore multimedia engagement. Uh, I'm going to read over this very detailed little part for this thing. Uh, note the picture and explore some dimensions to it that we might not have thought about. So this is pattern 53, multimedia engagement. Audio, video, text, graphics, virtual, real, broadcasting, watching, reading, interacting, sharing, imagery, music, story, poetry, dance, games, drama, performance, conversation, different strokes for different folks and different gifts from each. So understand appropriate uses of each engagement medium and their complementary powers to reach and engage more and more diverse people more and more fully. And the picture has this woman looking at all these different modes of being and interaction, uh, many of them uh, virtual online stuff, and thinking about what would be appropriate for her project, or what does she think about them? She may just say, no, I don't want to even consider that one. Uh, she has problems with it. With the sense that there are many ways to uh, engage people around an issue or a question uh, and that the more we understand those the more we can reach just people for whom one mode is really comfortable and other modes aren't there's ways to synergize those modes uh, the idea of um, of games and interactivity uh, you know there's games that actually teach people or give people an experience uh, of um, dealing with an issue you know farmville was a big a big uh, uh, game that taught people a lot about what's involved in farming and there's ones that train you on city development and stuff there are deliberative games there's a, a number of you know government budget games where they say here's here's your all the different parts of the government things the government funds and you get to allocate funds to each of these and see what happens and do you want to raise taxes you know you want to cut out programs lower you know lower the amount of money that's spent for you know for foreign aid or for military or whatever and in order to get the money you want to fund this other thing and see how it comes out and you get to play with that and learn hey you know Government budgets are are not as easy to put together as you might think. Uh, so that kind of thing. And then there are there are ways to uh, illustrate and animate things that are ordinarily linear verbal words. Uh, some of them online. It's like RSA Animate is a uh, is a program where they have taken various speeches people have given, and there's this little hand that draws while the person is giving the speech they are drawing this and there's a real time uh in-person dimension called graphic facilitation or graphic recording uh where a person who is a good artist at this kind of art will actually while a conversation is going on or while a lecture is happening they're there on a chart pad drawing these pictures lines and arrows and there's all sorts of little symbols that mean mean specific things and you get a pictorial representation of uh, what's being talked about and like for some people that's really really meaningful it's not so meaningful for me but for some people that's better than the actual original original piece uh, and of course the art there's debate in the united states over arts and play it's like the, we want to focus on um, people being able to uh, read and write and then there's math and science, and that's where the action is. That's where professions are. That's what businesses want. And the the arts and play these are these are wastes of time. And more and more research is showing that these are fundamental to people's ability to be creative and to do work together. Uh, and so, putting that you know, engaging kids in many different ways engaging kids <laughs> according to what they're interested in is a whole other mode of doing that but that's covered by uh, some other patterns 
Uh, I was thinking, I was thinking of uh, exploring several, uh, several things that I know have exist or existed, uh, different programs, and doing a thought experiment about what it would be like to combine them and what would be gained by that. So one of the classic ones I talk about is the experiment was done in 1991 by McLean's Magazine, which is the glossy news weekly for Canada. Uh, and their country was coming apart at the seams and they got a dozen people <clears throat> chosen scientifically for their differences from across Canada and put them together with an expert person in uh, sort of consensual negotiation, principled negotiation to facilitate over two and a half days, a long weekend at this resort. Uh, and it almost fell apart halfway through. It's, it's featured in several of my books and I have a major web, web research website on it uh, that's linked um, in this pattern and other patterns. <clears throat> uh, and McLean's was trying to get, see if these people who were so different could come to any agreement about a vision for Canada. And so this was a face-to-face -face engagement, a facilitated engagement <clears throat> with people who were considered a cross-section of Canada. This was a particular kind of face-to-face -face conversation. And they had reporters present in it, taking notes about it, and they had Canadian TV. So we're bringing in the TV. Uh, had Canadian TV come in and uh, video everything that was going on. And then they had uh, 40 pages of coverage in McLean's about what happened. They have bios of the people that were involved. They have step-by-step, -step, you know, here's, here's what happened on Friday night, here's what happened Saturday, here's what happened each of, the, each of the days, like a dozen pages of reporting on here's what happened, hour by hour kind of, who said what. And you can, you can sort of, from outside reading the magazine, you get into what it was like for the people who were involved. Uh, it wasn't just, here's a description of what happened. Here's, here are specific people and they're saying these things and I agree with this person, I disagree with this, that person. You're vicariously in the middle of the drama and the fact that it had several breakthroughs and they ended up creating this amazing document together, which was also in the magazine. Uh, and they became friends, many of them were long-term friends afterwards across unbelievable differences. Uh, people who had fought during the process, you know, became fast friends. Uh, and, you know, descriptions of the process, how it was done, you know, background of the issues, all this is 40 pages of coverage, just unbelievable. But it's all written with photographs. And same week that magazine came out, there was a, um, uh, a video, an hour-long um, public affairs documentary from Canadian TV with all the film that they'd done. So you get a video version of what you've got written down, audio visual version of what you have written and pictured in the magazine. So right now we're at multimedia engagement. Uh, what they didn't have was a participatory dimension for the public who was reading it. It had a tremendous impact. They did research on it and there's a tremendous impact uh, when they did that. Uh, but there's another thing that recently happened in a suburb of London. One of my colleagues there was in, you know, having, you know, 50 to 100 people from community of this large, large community. And he had like three, in one, one series, he had three conversations. In another series, he had five conversations uh, where there were dozens of people uh, in a format where they're in small groups talking together uh, and then in large groups sharing what they came up with in the small groups. Uh, so these big conferences basically. Uh, and they also had an online pro program called Paulus where people can take, you know, and they're, discuss they're discussing an issue and they're not actually discussing it, but they can say, this is what I think about it. This is an idea for a solution, here's some information, whatever, and other people who are participating can put up 
can respond to each of these ideas and say, I think this is, I agree with it, I disagree with it, I pass. And so there's a, uh, a, a artificial intelligence in the background, which is organizing everybody kind of into groups and noticing similarities and differences between the groups and providing additional information. But it's basically highly participatory or inventory by everybody in the community. And instead of dozens of people, you had more than a thousand people, and it can go up to 10,000 people. It can be lots of people participating. Uh, and the information, the people who were part of the conversations would add information, their perspectives from these conversations into this polis discussion that lots of other people were participating in. And results from the polis and ideas from the polis conversation would be online, would become part of this face-to-face -face conversation. The dynamics between face-to-face -face and online are really interesting. Uh, and I could imagine also including in this uh, um, issue briefing videos. You go, some people make little documentaries out in the community, talk to people, to stakeholders and experts about this situation and have a, a five or 50 minute video about here's this this particular issue here's what's going on and here are some of the choices here's what we need to decide on uh, here are consequences for various choices we might make etc these would be briefing videos that would be out in the world anybody could check them out so having video informational input would be another um, mode another media mode to engage people and you can have games you know have an idea for a uh, uh, a game where people are in teams and depending on how diverse your team is and how a high level of agreement you get to, you get more points. So people who come to 50-50 agreement and everybody in it is a member of one political party, that's a low form. You get a few points for that. But if you have eight people in your team and they're all really different, like the people in the in the Canadian, in the McLean's Canadian experiment, and you get them to agree 100%, that's like, wow, you have done a fabulous job. And I designed a basic thing based on people's concerns and handling people's concerns, which is another one of the patterns, all concerns addressed. Uh, but if people have a game and different teams of people, you know, the, the software would help them be, uh, find their team that will the right kind level of diversity that they're comfortable with and then the results are published you know online and there's competition between the teams to get points and to generate fabulous ideas and those fabulous ideas could be fed into these conversations I mean the sense of lots of different dimensions feeding into each other lots of different ways of looking at that so if you are a visual learner uh, you can get lots of information from it if you are a verbal you know, word person, you can get lots of information. If you want to just sit and listen and learn, that's one way. If you want to engage and put your two cents in, all these things, having interactivity, having aesthetics and beauty as part of what you're considering, what you're dealing with, because that can engage people. Attractive, the word attractive means it attracts. So drawing people in through the aesthetics and beauty of things entertainment, what they call infotainment. You know, if it's a game, it pulls you in. Uh, having accessible, meaningful information and accessible depends on how you think, how you respond to things. Uh, so that's a dimension to consider. Um, movement to energy vibe, either um, movement on a screen or physical movement, having people move in their while they're learning to move around in various ways or position themselves in various ways. There's a, um, lots of different practices where people are actually up and moving. In the 35 thing, people are milling around. The energetics of that is very different from sitting and voting, voting on things, even though it's, the results are very similar. Uh, but the energy is totally different. Uh, so that's a different form of engagement is things that involve movement and activity and, and energy. Uh, and cons the trade-offs of face-to-face -face and online, understanding that, you know, when you are face-to-face, -face, there's a level of, you know, you pick up on the 
pheromones of people and their body language and nuances which you don't necessarily get online even if it's video uh like in zoom or you know zoom calls or facetime or whatever there's a lot you get from video that's much more than you get from email or chats uh <clears throat> but the email and chats sit there they're they're outside of time uh and that is an advantage sometimes people can't always get together at the same time so being able to relate asynchronously as they say or synchronously these i'm offering those as things to know about different media uh, it's of course obviously way way more uh, complex much more possibilities and things to know than i am giving you here or you could possibly get and there's people who are experts in all these but to have that attitude it's like we want to engage this kind of people in this way how do we pull them in how do we make it uh accessible and interesting and have we want to we go back to the prime directive we want to evoke and engage the wisdom and resourcefulness of the whole on behalf of the whole multimedia engagement is fundamental to that we're talking about pulling people in uh, and having them in, um, interact with each other in ways that will be generative for the larger whole so that's the way we're thinking and these are all these tools and media are resources for doing that if we do it well that's this pattern